Uh, Dwayne Hopkins with uh, Polk Senior Games joining us here on Sports Central. And of course, you've been here before. You were on the radio version of Sports Central last night. Welcome back, and thank you so much. Thank you. It's great to be here, as always. And and I used to teach a little bit, right? Oh yes, I can remember. He was a student, uh, one of my students, as a matter of fact, in huh? in the day, as they say. Did you actually teach a lesson about a light tower? Because for the, about the last twenty years. <laughs> Okay, that I've worked for Mr. Jackson. There's been a light tower in the in the marketing plan, right? I think he must have picked that up someplace else, Neil. Well, he credits you, so we're going to give you the credit. So part of the success story that is uh, tourism and sports, we're going to give it to you, sir. Okay, uh, speaking of success, the Polk Senior Games, uh, 30th annual this year. Yep. Took a pause, obviously, in the COVID year, but uh, back and better than ever. Yeah, we took uh, the year off in 21, I guess, and last year we were able to offer only the outside games so we could keep people separated and protect them. But this year we're back for the 30th year with all 100 events and raring to go, so we're looking forward to that. 30 years, that is, that is incredible. And as I look back, and uh, that was just about the time we started the sports marketing program 31 years ago, and a woman by the name of Nancy Thornberry um, was just gung-ho moving forward with the senior games concept and at the time was working with um, the late uh, Lois Harp, the director of Parks and Rec for Polk County. And, uh, you know, I had some questions, you know, is this really going to work? This, this has worked and then some uh, to, you know, put sort of a shining star in her on her legacy. Absolutely. She was the, the momentum behind the games and was able to recruit, I don't know, 14 or 15 other people, influential, forward-looking people in the community, and they jumped on it. And that first year, and I think in the fall of 92, we had 777 competitors in about 20 different events. Now we've got 38 events, and in 2020, we had 2,450 participants. So we're one of the biggest, and we think the best, of course, in, in the Florida yeah, group. Yeah, and, and this is a qualifier for the state games, right? Absolutely. The top five in each event, men and women, qualify for the state games, and then you can move on to the national games from that. Yeah. Well, I think the important part, yeah, and the no. important part about that is you don't have to be a, a resident of Polk County to participate in the Absolute, Polk County games. Absolutely right. You only have to be over 50 years of age by the end of the year, uh, December 31st, uh, but you don't have to be a resident of Polk County. We have a number of winter visitors, for him. example, who participate <laughs> from all over the country, uh, and we're glad to have them. So, And it's important to, to mention, I think, that the games don't begin until the last Saturday in February, the 25th, but registration has already begun, and your registration has to be in by the 10th of February to give us a couple of weeks to get the shirts ready and so on and so forth. So, so it's important that you get registered soon. Well, the, the website, and, and we'll, we'll hit this again, yeah. for, if people want to register, and you know now so many of the seniors um, are as tech savvy as some of the millennials yeah. or Gen Zers, I guess, whatever they are. But um, what the website is, it, polkseniorgames.org, but I see a .com here too. Which one would it be? polkseniorgames.org. If you put in your browser Polk Senior Games, it's going to pop up okay. almost automatically. Okay. So that's one way to get information from the rule book is go to polkseniorgames.org. It's all there for you to read, or you can call the office if you are technically challenged. You can use the good old phone to call 863-533- 0055 and they'll send you a copy of the rule book. Everything you need to know is in that book. You know, I'm, I'm reading this, I'm intrigued with this Polk Senior Games Creed. If you think that you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but you think you can't, it's almost a cinch that you won't. And, you know, the whole philosophy behind the Polk Senior Games, um, I, I think is incredible because we're competitors our entire life, and it's a choice. You can choice, uh, choose to be a competitor, to fight through the difficulties of, of life, uh, through whatever it may be, but the Polk Senior Games is about competition, it's about camaraderie, 
and so much more than, oh, I'm the best. Well, maybe one person is, but you get so much more out of it. It's yeah. an experience. That's what you, that's what you yeah, win. Just the participation, to be out and active and maintain a healthy lifestyle. In addition to that, we are dependent upon a lot of volunteers to help the games go, Mark, more than 700. And without them, we, they wouldn't work. It's, yeah. it's just a part of this community. We are a great community for volunteering. So we're yeah, that, that is absolutely true. And I, as I'm looking at some of these, uh, some of these events, uh, I'm trying to match one of or two of them up with Mr. Duncan over here. <laughs> and uh, some of them, I don't even know what they are. Let me right? put my readers on and see yeah, if I you, can you do that. Uh, find because, something. <laughs> You know, I mean, you got everything from, from chess, cribbage, dancing. Neil wasn't very good at lawn darts. He just kept throwing them up in the air and they come down and smack them in the head. Gravity took care of everything else, right? Yeah. Well, it's taking care of a lot of things with him, but. <laughs> well, you mentioned something very important, Mark. You know, we've got a lot of active games like tennis and bowling and golf and so right. on and so forth, but we have a number of games where you don't have to be that active, but still you're using your mind like chess mm -hmm. and cribbage, Sudoku, that kind of thing. So we have something that ought to please just about anybody. Lawn bowling, what's pepper? I think of that as a kind of a double euchre game. I've only watched it, I've not played it, but okay. it's a card game. Okay. Uh, and that's one of those good uh, card games. Uh, well, well, ESPN, you know, they have the, the, the poker stuff on and, you know, there's other, other programming that does yeah. too. Um, you know, the one that, that uh, hacky, not hacky sack, what's uh, uh, cornhole? Mm -hmm. We had that for a while, Mark. I'm glad you mentioned that, but we lost our supplier of the equipment for that. So if there's anybody watching this that knows how we can get that game because it was very popular, but we just haven't had the equipment to oh, really? make it go. So we're dependent upon venues around the county to provide equipment and places to play. So that's, I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, you know where a good place to get that, I think, would be, I think they have it at Grove Roots, Neil. I yeah. bet you we could help find something. How many participants did you have? Well, we must have had 100 participants. Wow. I mean, it took yeah. more than half a day to do it. With, sure. I think we must have had 12 sets of cornholes. Yeah. But it's very, you know, we did a double elimination and all that kind of thing, and it was very effective, very, very well supported. We can definitely talk off air and uh, figure that out for uh, next year, because I think that's, you know, uh, you look at the Advent Health Fieldhouse, and of course we're always looking to diversify our sports portfolio, and, right. and cornhole is, it, it's a sport that's very popular across the country, but uh, Ray Lynn and the team has done a great job recruiting uh, these major events here. So What's I, coming up in February? I know that there's a big one that's actually being aired on ESPN. Yeah. yeah so, I know it's a very competitive sport, and we'd love to have it if we could find the equipment to do it. We will we definitely, need, we, 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 we will take care of that. Some uh, Central Florida sports yep. uh, cornhole boards. Yep. How many? Okay, we'll talk. We yep. ought to mention that there is a fee involved. We're a non-profit, non of course, mm -hmm. but there is a $10 fee for the first event, and then for each additional event, it's $5, but for a maximum of 35 bucks. If you can participate in 12 or 15 different events, and we have people who do that, there's still a maximum of $35 involved. That, you know, that's insane. That's so <laughs> affordable. Yep. Holy smokes, got 10 four bucks years for one ready. of us. <laughs> you better put that in your budget. I'm ready, four I'm years ready, now. <laughs> I'm ready. You better be there, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right, so once again, the Polk Senior Games uh, actually will be held, registration is open now, um, start of January 3rd, and, but they have to be received by February 10th. The games kick off. Uh, the 25th of February, a lot of dates here, and run through March 11th. It's a fantastic thing. Just go to Polk, just Google Polk Senior Games. Uh, one of the best and, uh, well, arguably it is the best senior games in the entire state of Florida. Make sure you check it out. Mr. Hopkins, thank you so thank, much for joining us. It's, it's always a pleasure to see you. And, uh, you know, what's that? Uh, Fountain of youth. <laughs> He's the fountain of youth. There you here. go. I hope I can keep it going. Well, yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. Hey, everyone. If you enjoyed this interview and want to watch more Sports Central, click the video below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.